The audio you're about to hear is from a phone call with Titus Morris on October 22nd, 2024. Hey, Titus, back back in October of last year, you told me that Connie Bright had accused you of molesting two girls. Just correct. She did. Mm-hmm. Who were those two girls? Yes. When was that? When she accused me? No. When did she accuse you? Yes. Uh, it would have been like. Uh, because she was mad at me, and she also accused me of sexually harassing her and stalking her. And you'd be willing to allow her to buy land next to you, next to your house of prayer, and you'd be interested in marrying her daughter? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely? Yeah, she she told me, Titus, I'm sorry. I, you know, And she also reported me to CPS, and then uh, CPS never did anything about it, but she told me, she said, well, Titus, um, when they bring up this CPS report that I made lying about you, uh, I'm sorry, Titus, and I'm going to tell them that that I got mad at you and I lied. And so so, uh, Connie Bright went to jail, and like, okay, so I wanted to write a big paper because she was publicly accusing me, and I wanted to give this paper to, like, everybody that she had talked to. And my dad said, don't do that, Titus. He said, you know, I have a scripture for you. The battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. He said, Titus, just put it in God's hands. So soon after she accused me of of that, she went to jail. She was in jail for eight months. And can you guess what the charges were against her? She was charged with... sexually harassing and stalking her boyfriend and she was in jail for eight months because her attorney would say well here why don't you plead this or say this and she's like no I'm not going to do that so she wouldn't like she wouldn't work with her attorney and so she was in in jail for eight months and I went to the jail and visited Connie so I love Connie like Connie has asked for forgiveness uh, and there's no issues. There's nothing between us. I trust Connie. Connie trusts me. There's no issues. You know, forgiveness is something where you don't hold the past against somebody. Do I remember the past? Yes, but I do not hold it against her. I find it just mind blowing that you would be able to trust her given that she falsely accused you of molesting. Well, people say things when they get mad. She also hit me in the face, you know, but I'm not afraid that, you know, uh, and I, I had five witnesses of that. And I told her, I said, if like, if I wasn't a Christian, I would just say, okay, I would call the police and I would say, I have five witnesses here that you hit me in the face. So now you're going to jail. Like I said, but because I love you, I care about you. I'm not going to do that. Why, why did she hit you in the face? Because she was mad at me. Why was she mad at you? Um, so she was like, really, really like didn't have enough clothes on and she was staying with my parents. And so I said, Hey dad, I said, this is really an issue. Like this, you know, we don't want Rachel and Rebecca dressing that way. We really don't, you know, it's not something that we should have in our home. Uh, and I said, uh, you know, like dad, are you going to deal with this situation or do you want me to say something? Or dad's like, Oh, you go ahead. So I said, Connie, I said, could you please do something that would, you know, make Jesus happy? And she's like, what's that? And I said, could you just put some more clothes on that would be more modest? And she's like, no. And um, I said, oh, okay. And I waited for a while, and I was like, okay, well, if you're not going to dress modestly, then you need to go leave this home, and you need to stay away and, you know, stay out outside and not, don't come in unless you're willing to dress modestly. And so then she got so hopping mad that um, then we, we had a discussion and there were five people in the discussion. And so she got so mad in, in the course of that discussion that she came to hit me in the face. Amazing. 
Wow. Well, Titus, if they ever turn on you, you know, um, you're you're kind of sewn in together because she owns the the land just east of the house of prayer. So you, you know, um, good luck divorcing your your future mother in law. In a sense, if it does go bad, if they turn on you, you're you're going to be in a in a bad spot, Titus. My future's in God's hands, you know, whether whether we get married or whether we don't get married, that I don't know for sure. Um, but what I do know is that the Lord is blessing me and the Lord is guiding and the Lord is providing and people are supporting this ministry, people are coming to this ministry, people are saying the Lord told me to come here. And so whatever falsehoods that you propagate, it, it's not keeping people from from hearing the voice of the Lord telling them, oh, go to Titus, go help Titus. Do you think that go Satan can bless Titus. people too, Titus? Oh, yes, absolutely. He blesses a lot of rock stars and other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, Titus, sometimes I think that Satan is blessing you. Okay. Loves your opinion and you're entitled to your own opinion. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, goodness, Titus. I don't know. I don't think it's going to go well for y'all. I just don't. Oh, well, one day you'll see them here on this, this land again, helping with the garden, riding the horses. Oh, I, I, I saw Jeremiah on your land back in April during the no-contact order. So, you know, irregardless of the law, you're going to do whatever you want to do. Right? Oh. Boy, it got quiet, Bible Titus. Does. The Bible does say we ought to obey God rather than men. And if the Lord tells a person that they need to study the Bible and, and worship the Lord in the woods, then that's what what people do when they obey the Lord. And so, yeah. yeah I don't. I don't think it's going to go well in court. Well, that's what you think, and I just wait and see. It, it won't go well for Jeff Kane lying and testifying that I babysat them for eight, eight, eight times when it was more so as 200 times. Titus, I just don't think you have any credibility left. Well, that's your opinion. Um, the judge said she wouldn't trust you around her dog or a horse. I mean, don't you think that that indicates her opinion of you? Um, that, that may be her opinion based on the limited knowledge that she has. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether or not she has limited knowledge, Titus. It's her opinion. You know, th we're talking about your reputation. Yeah, but people people's opinions can change when they see more information. I don't think it's going to get better, Titus. I mean, you took $251,000 to build a church, but you're building your home. I mean, Titus, that's fraudulent. No, it's not. Absolutely. It's the house of prayer. It's the house of prayer. Okay, but you didn't, your GoFundMe wasn't to build your house, it was to build a church. The word church. I never, I never wrote anything on that GoFundMe page. Yeah, not but you, you took the money, Titus. It's a, it's a form of, it's like laundering. Oh, I no, didn't write it up. It's not, this is not money laundering. This is, this is where God's people will come and learn God's word. This is places where people will learn to eat healthy. Uh, this is this is God's house. This is this is not just a, a nice mansion for me. This is God's house. But the people did. You know. were there. You were there in the. You were there in the room when when Steve Howe said, "This is not a church. This is a house of prayer." You were there. There's a video of it where Steve Howe says, "This is not a church. This is a house of prayer." You were there, and I and I seconded it, and I was like, yeah, the, you know, this is not a, a church where we got membership, and we go, um, you know, I, I agreed with him. I said, yeah, it's, it's a house of prayer. You know, that's what it was from the very beginning. That's what I explained to Peter in the, the, the video in December. So, you know. My end. Okay, if you think that it's fraudulent, that's fine. Um, and so, if if somebody decides to take this to court, they can. I'm I'm ready to go. To, I'm ready to go go to court tomorrow. Um, you know, let the court decide. You know, 
it really doesn't matter whether you think it's fraudulent or not uh, if, if it goes to court that let them decide. Amazing. And there's lots of people that are very happy with what's happening here. What about Matt you know, Gustweiler, you know, Titus? Matt Gustweiler, he wants his $1,500 back. Are you going to refund it to him? Uh, if he comes here and, and you know, he take, it comes for a visit and he's like, give me my, you know, I need to him my $1,500 back, yes, I'll give it back to him. Really? Well, why don't you just send yeah. it to him? Why you got to make him come there? It's a long way from Ohio. Well, like, how do I know that, that, that Gus gave the money? Like, maybe... Like, you don't believe when it says Stephen Henson on there, you don't believe it's Stephen Henson. You think it's, in the comment section, you think it's Stephanie Kane. So, like, how do I know that who this, this Matt Gustweiler is? Have you talked to Matt Gustweiler? Has he been calling you? No. He's never called you? He's never left any voicemails for you? There was someone who said, um, it looks like you're just building a house, and I gave some money and if if what this is saying if what if what beyond category is saying is true then i'm going to see you in court and and i don't know his name and it, it, he, it, the way it was left it was you there was no voicemail like there was no uh, or I, I, there was a voicemail but there was no number like it was private so i couldn't access the number he's never sent you any letters no if he would send me a letter and he would say, I, I gave you $1,500, and, you know, I'm not happy with what I'm seeing, and I want my money back, and he sends me a letter, uh, then, yes, I, I am willing to, my dad can write a check, and, yes, I'm willing to give him $1,500 back. Oh, that would be nice. How's the, how's the construction going on the house of prayer, Titus? Uh, I don't, I don't trust you with that information. Oh, okay. Hmm. But apparently you can, um, I mean, I guess you have a cohort to, that comes and takes pictures for you. So, um, I guess you can just go get your cohort to take a picture. I know that you told me back in October that when when uh, Con Eagers that there was a she held like a community meeting. Yes. Where was that? Uh, it was at the Franklin's home. Interesting. Was this? Did you want Franklin? What's that? Uh, yes, I did. Have you ever asked any other girls uh, for their hand in marriage? Uh, I've never proposed to anybody. Uh, but there's been a couple different ones that I told them I, you know, I, I really feel like I What about Catherine? What, what, what specifically are you asking? Did you ask Catherine if, if, uh, if she would marry you? Weren't you all engaged? No, I didn't ask her if she would marry you. You weren't engaged to Catherine? No. Interesting. Did you break up with Catherine or did Catherine break up with you?
showed up one day and she's like, I'm going to the West. And uh, I said, oh, wow, I'm going to miss you. And I tried to give her some of Lazarus's things that I'd given to Lazarus, and she's like, no, there's not room. There was room, but there was, you know, like, a vehicle, but she's like, no, there's not room. And, like, it really hurt Lazarus because, like, it meant a lot to him because it was something I made him and I made Lazarus. So then, uh, uh, like, I felt like telling her, well, please don't go, but then I thought, well, if I, I need to love her enough to give her freedom to leave. And so, um... I gave her a hug. She, she, she told me this is the best two months of my entire life. Um, but I, to me, I didn't understand why if it was the best time of her life she'd leave. But see, when she came, everything was quiet here. But then all of a sudden, this place just um, ballooned with people, and she did it stressed her out. Maybe. And she told me that I needed to have an appointment for every person that shows up here. Yeah. And I told her I can't do that. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. Here Fair enough. You know, and so she left, and I thought, well, maybe she's going to call me. And I, I didn't think that she would be going for long because Lazarus loves me, and, like, he would want to be here. Like, he really wanted to be here, and he really wanted us to get married. So I told her, I said, I feel like God is leading us to get married, and I told her that. And she's like, well, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, and she's like, I, I, I think I can't live without you, but she was never sure about it. Like, I was sure that, okay, we can make this work, but she never was sure about it. And then when she left, I thought, well, you know, she'll, she didn't call me, and I didn't call her. And then about three, four months later, she called, and she's like, are you over me? Because I'm over you. Ooh. And I was like, well, I said, I felt like God was leading us together, but then all of a sudden I felt like the leading stopped, and so I don't know. I said, I'm not telling you that I am over you, but I, I just don't really see God clear direction from the Lord. And she's like, well, I'm, I'm, I, it's easy for me to get over stuff like this. And so uh, that's the last time I talked to her. Okay. Titus, have you ever asked any, any man uh, if you could marry his daughters, such as yes. when, when they were under the age of 18? You sure about that? So there were a total of about five hours of conversations uh, last week when Titus was just calling me out of the blue, as well as I guess at least one of those conversations was planned. We had a three-way call, um, me, him, and another person to address um, that issue uh, there was someone who told me that Titus had asked a man in the past if he could marry his daughters. And um, I'll just say this. When we talked on the phone, when we had the three-way call, his answer had changed. It went from, I believe he said there was no context, or I asked him, was there any context where you'd ever asked for you know, a, a, an underage uh, asked if you could marry an underage girl, uh, as in like 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 years old, because there were two different ones, if I understand correctly, according to the accusation. And I spoke with that, uh, that third person in a different phone call, and um, then we actually had the three-way phone call, and then Titus' story did, did seem to change. So I don't know at what point... Uh, that needs to be addressed, and I don't know at what point you know some official needs to listen to that or not. But this is stuff that I just can't keep uh, to myself. It needs to come out. So, um, thank you for listening, and um, please like and subscribe. Thank you.